Hello class, and welcome to Biology 151, or more commonly known as the Biology of Pokemon. Yes, today we are having a science lesson, specifically biology in Pokemon. Just because there are lizards that shoot fire out of their mouths doesn't mean all Pokemon is science fiction. In reality, there are a few biological concepts that are present in the games that are scientifically sound. Today, I'm going to be discussing one of those concepts and its accuracy. I'm actually putting my biology degree to work. So class, let's begin. Of all the Pokemon gimmicks that have been introduced into the Pokemon universe, none have made me as happy as when they introduced regional forms in Sun and Moon. I think I had just finished my evolution class the spring before they revealed them, so all of this was fresh in my mind. Regional forms are a perfect example of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, specifically the concept of natural selection, or should we say, natural selection. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go. Charles Darwin was a world-renowned naturalist, geologist, and biologist, who is widely known as the father of evolution. His 1859 book, On the Origin of Species, opened up society's eyes to the theory of evolution. Though he was not the first to propose the idea of evolution, his research and theory of natural selection was the first to actually provide mechanisms behind how species actually change over time. Some of Darwin's most notable research took him to the Galapagos Islands, so it's fitting that regional forms came from Alola, an island-based region. While exploring the islands, Darwin would collect finches, and these finches would help formulate his idea of natural selection. So, what was so important about these finches? Well, from island to island, these finches were morphologically similar, meaning they had very similar features. Except one. They all had different beaks. Darwin saw these birds and realized that they all descended from the same ancestor, but had different beaks depending on what their diet consisted of. Seed eaters had stout beaks, where insectivores had smaller, sharper ones. Thanks to DNA analysis, we've been able to confirm that the 13 species of finches Darwin studied are, in fact, a monophyletic group, meaning they all do descend from a single ancestor. Webster's Dictionary defines natural selection as a natural process in which individuals or groups best adapted to the conditions under which they live, survive, and produce young and poorly adapted forms are eliminated. If you've ever heard the phrase survival of the fittest, that's a layman's term definition of natural selection. The finches adapted over time for the food that was available to them, and thus distinguished themselves apart from their counterparts on different islands, and became their own species. Now, how does natural selection and regional forms relate to each other? Well, let's take a look at the flavor text for Alolan Vulpix in the Pokemon Sword Pokedex. After long years in the ever-snow-capped mountains of Alola, this Vulpix has gained power over ice. That's it. That's natural selection right there. They just laid it out for us. Natural selection is adapting over time to survive. That's why we don't see any Cantonian Vulpix on Mount Wanakila. Even though they're fueled by fire, they can't survive in the harsh cold. So after years of adapting, they toss their fire typing out the window and gain the ice type to survive in that habitat. Another example is a lowland executor. In real life, there are multiple species of palm trees, both tall and short, just like these two counterparts. The stout species are often found in drier climates due to them having less access to water. They tend to stay closer to the ground. Then in another realm, the palm trees we see lining a beach are often tall, not only because they don't have to worry so much about water, but they have to worry more about sea breezes, specifically hurricane winds. These palm trees, in part, adapted to harsh winds that come off the coast, and their flexibility prevents them from breaking easily in these gales. There are probably more adaptations that go along with these differences between the short and tall palm trees, but those are the big ones I know off the top of my head. I'm gonna give you one last example. Wooper. Let's look once again at the flavor text from Pokemon entries. In Violet, Jotonian Wooper reads, when it walks around on land, it coats its body with a slimy, poisonous film. And the Scarlet entry for Paldean Wooper reads, After losing a territorial struggle, Wooper began living on land. The Pokemon changed over time, developing a poisonous film to protect its body. 
So from that, we learned some things about the different Whoopers. Even though they both have this poisonous film on them, Jotonian Whooper only really gets this when it's on land. It's still amphibious, so this film is likely a way to contain moisture in its skin, as well as a defense mechanism. Whereas, Paul Dan Whooper evolved to cover itself with this mucus all the time, so it no longer needed to return to the water, losing its water typing and gaining poison. So yeah, once again, adapting to survive, and becoming a new species. Natural selection is a fascinating mechanism that drives evolution. It is one of my favorite things that I learned throughout my biology education. There's still so much about evolution and other biological concepts I want to talk about with all of you. However, that's all I have for today. I hope you were informed and learned something today. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a like and also comment what your favorite biology slash science topic is. I hope to make more videos like this, so if there's anything specific you want me to cover, just let me know. Thanks so much for learning with me. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and until next time, I'll catch you later.